Hello, my name is Elliot Hack, the Community Relations Senior Associate here at Ida Culver House, Ravenna. And before we start today's presentation, I'd like to share a little bit about our beautiful community. As you may or may not know, Ida Culver House, Ravenna is set in the heart of the Ravenna neighborhood of Seattle. Our residents enjoy the charming neighborhood's lovely shops and cafes, including a wonderful bookstore, easy access to medical facilities, and transportation options. On site, we have a beautiful garden with walking paths, warm and inviting common areas, and a variety of apartments to choose from. Ida Culver House Ravenna is anticipating a full renovation, which we expect will occur by early 2023. In the meantime, we are still welcoming new residents to the community. Some of our new residents view this as an opportunity to test out senior living or relocating to Seattle. Others are looking for a short-term respite stay or a temporary or longer-term solution to a problematic living situation. We are offering robust transition services and resources for our residents who are still living with us when we get closer to construction. And residents will be given priority in the new building when it's complete. If you're interested in learning more, our community relations team would be happy to answer your questions or take you on a tour of our community at your request. We can be reached at 206-523-7315. And now on to our main event. We are honored to host Carrie Eaton, who will be presenting on caring for the caregiver. Carrie is a licensed mental health counselor. She has worked for Air Living for almost six years, providing support to residents and families. When not at work, Carrie enjoys hiking and camping with her family. Thank you for joining us, Carrie. Well, thank you for the wonderful introduction, Elliot. Um, it's, yeah, I really appreciate it. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen now. As Elliot mentioned, and welcome to all of you attending, um, I'm a licensed mental health counselor. I feel honored to have been here at Era Living for nearly six years. Um, in my role here, I have a diverse way of, I guess, supporting residents and families. I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one counseling and support. I host a variety of different support and discussion groups. Um, and then I'm a referral and resource um, source for families and residents here. So I, I really enjoy the work that I do. I really appreciate that Era Living is unique in that we have a counselor at all eight of our communities, which is not the standard for retirement communities. Um, I have over 20 years of experience in the social service field, uh, working with individuals, families, and groups of all ages. So today, as we dive in talking about caring for the caregiver. Um, some of you might be caregivers uh, right now, or maybe anticipate uh, some caregiving in your future. And before we get into talking about the ways that we take care of ourselves as caregivers, I think it's important to address um, the reality of caregiver burnout. And as caregivers, we can experience burnout when we're not getting the help that we need, or when we're trying to do more than we're able to do. And that might be physically, um, emotionally, financially. And so oftentimes uh, we get run down and we might be experiencing a change in attitude from feeling positive about this caring uh, role that we have to feeling more negative and even apathetic. So, you know, this caregiver burnout really affects our emotional, physical, and mental state, and we can become exhausted and run down. Caring for a loved one, you know, is really a way that many of us demonstrate our love and commitment. It can be incredibly rewarding. Um, it can add a whole new level of appreciation for the person you're caring for and enhance that relationship. And on the other side, uh, there can be a lot of exhaustion and worry, stress, perhaps inadequate resources or lack of access to resources, and then just the continuous demands of providing care ongoing can be enormously stressful. 
And some people who experience caregiver stress can be really vulnerable to changes in their own health and well being. Some individuals are more at risk for experiencing this burnout. Um, some of these individuals, some risk factors are, you know, being female, um, spending more time, more hours caregiving, um, especially if the person you provide care for lives with you. So, you know, you might not ever get a break, even, even during sleeping hours, you know, you're kind of always on. Um, you know, having depression or anxiety or some other of your own emotional and mental health needs and concerns prior to being a caregiver put someone at greater risk. Uh, you know, being socially isolated and not being connected and having a support system. Financial difficulties. And some people haven't developed coping skills and might struggle with problem solving and difficult situations. And of course, there are times when being a caregiver isn't a choice. It's um, just kind of what has to happen. And so that can put someone at risk for burnout and stress as well. Now, caregiving can take a toll and some of the effects that we see on someone's health and well-being are, you know, withdrawing from family and friends, uh, losing interest in things that once gave you joy and pleasure, you know, just down feelings, you know, maybe being more irritable, feeling sad, feeling hopeless and helpless. Uh, you might notice changes in appetite, in weight, in your sleep regimen. And maybe you notice that you're more susceptible to get sick uh, more often. Every, every little cold that comes along, you end up getting because your body is run down from stress and your immune system is weakened. And then just feeling that overall physical and emotional exhaustion. And some people notice that they, you know, turn to increased use of alcohol and drugs and, and maybe even prescription drugs like sleep aids. Family caregivers are at a, a much higher risk of having depression and anxiety. In fact, about 46 to 59% of caregivers experience depression. So it's really important to be aware of these things um, and notice the red flags. Some other red flags um, for caregivers that are experiencing stress. If you're noticing that you are failing to make time for exercise, um, you know, not able uh, to, you know, take care of yourself when you're feeling ill. Uh, caregivers are more likely to experience some kind of chronic illness um, brought on by, by stress and being run down. Uh, we oftentimes see high cholesterol, high blood pressure. And due to time constraints and um, the responsibility of caregiving, oftentimes caregivers postpone or fail to make their own medical appointments and prioritize their own health. So here's uh, just a, a list to show, you know, kind of what are the, the symptoms? Uh, what does caregiver burnout look like? You know, as caregivers, we tend to be so focused on our loved ones that sometimes we don't even realize that our own health and well being are suffering. So, watching out for these signs. Um, a lot of these I, I mentioned earlier, you know, feeling tired most of the time, maybe, you know, noticing that change in sleep. And this can be both the ends of the spectrum where, you know, maybe you're having difficulty getting adequate sleep, getting to sleep, staying asleep. Um, and then the, the, full spectrum other side of, you know, just not ever feeling rested, feeling like you could sleep um, endlessly. A significant fluctuation in weight one way or the other is a sign of, of stress and caregiver burnout. And then our bodies react to what we experience emotionally and mentally. So oftentimes we might notice an increase in you know, just aches and pains. Uh, maybe we're getting frequent headaches. Um, maybe we have kind of upset stomach, uh, even, you know, skin irritations, kind of like a stress rash 
um, and just overall body tension and distress. Again, you know, if, if you're noticing that you or someone who's providing care has increased their use of alcohol, drugs, or prescription medication, that can be an indicator of stress. And on the mental and emotional side, you know, just kind of always feeling anxious and concerned, maybe just feeling uh, mentally overwhelmed. A lot of caregivers note that they struggle with being able to concentrate or, you know, they, they feel like they're worried about their memory because their brains are so overwhelmed and they're, they're so, you know, maxed out that, that they might not recall the things that they put on their calendar that day, which is out of the ordinary for them. Um, being more easily irritated, frustrated, or angry. Again, you know, not having interest in the things that once brought you enjoyment. I'm just feeling sad, uh, feeling emotional, maybe feeling like you're all alone in this, and, and even some apathy towards uh, life and your situation. As we all know, um, because there's been numbers of, number of studies uh, countless articles, TV shows, specials about how excessive stress, especially prolonged over time, can really harm our health. So when we don't get enough sleep, when we don't get enough physical activity or eat a balanced diet, all of that increases our risk of our own medical problems, um, you know, diabetes, heart disease, so I think that's, you know, the main reason that I like to talk to people about caregiver burnout and, and how to manage it. So now that we've, we've heard kind of all the, the risks, all the negative, I, I do want to focus on what we can do about it and the importance of taking care of ourselves in a caregiving role. Um, we've talked about the emotional and physical demands that are involved in providing care for someone, and it can strain even the most resilient of individuals. So it's really important for us to take advantage of all the different resources and tools that are available to help provide care uh, for your loved one as well as yourself. And remember that if you don't take care of yourself as a caregiver, then you won't be able to provide the quality and level of care that you want to for someone else. Uh, many, many people in caregiving roles uh, recognize that, you know, it consumes a lot of time. It's also very physically and emotionally, energetically draining. Uh, you, you put a lot into it. it. You know, it's a lot of work. And oftentimes that being constantly exhausted and stressed out, as we've talked about, can lead to some health concerns. Hopefully, you know, you notice those red flags before it gets to the point where you're in a major health crisis. Um, but when we have our own health concerns brought on by stress, that, that makes us less able to provide the level of care to our loved one. So the secret is um, to survive a long-term caregiving uh, relationship, we have to pace ourselves and we have to rest when we're tired. And I know that sounds much easier said than done, but we'll be talking about you know, some ways to get that rest, um, kind of the big one being respite care and, and how that can really provide the break needed. And it's hard, but you know, we have to recognize that caring for ourselves as caregivers is one of the most important, often the most forgotten things that we can do as a caregiver. And when we help ourselves, then we can more effic efficiently and effectively help others. So when you as the caregiver take care of your own needs, the person that you provide care for benefits as well. So let's talk a little bit about some self-care strategies. Uh, the first one on here, accept help. Um, you know, I, I think that this can oftentimes be the most challenging for individuals to do. You know, we live in a culture where being, you know, a strong, independent, autonomous person and, you know, kind of being 
able to do everything on your own is, is really praised and valued. So sometimes even just getting over that hurdle, hurdle and being able to ask for the help you need is a huge accomplishment. So I suggest maybe coming up with a list of things that others in your life could help you with that are realistic. Um, maybe there's someone in your life who is able and willing to take your loved one for a walk a few times a week. Maybe you have another person in your support system who could run errands or cook you a meal every now and then. So finding ways to realistically ask for and receive help. Next, focusing on what you're able to provide. Um, it's really normal for caregivers to sometimes feel guilty, um, but hopefully we can all realistically realize that there is no such thing as a perfect caregiver. So really just, you know, coming back to the trust in yourself and believe in yourself that you're doing the best that you can, that you're making the best decisions that you can for you and your loved one at any given time. Setting realistic goals. I, I don't know about all of you, but sometimes when we look at the big picture, um, it can be overwhelming. So, you know, breaking that down into more manageable steps uh, that can be accomplished. Uh, this could be, you know, just prioritizing what needs to be done, um, prioritizing what's important to you, setting up a routine, and also having healthy boundaries, which means, you know, saying no to requests and things that are draining or unhealthy to you. And, and that goes for all areas of your life. Having those healthy boundaries is so important. Getting connected. So finding out about the different caregiving resources that are available locally to you. Um, there's different classes, oftentimes really specified to maybe the particular diagnosis or condition that your loved one that you're providing care to has. So it can really be tailored to, to getting connected to the right information and resources. Joining a support group. I'm a huge advocate for group work. Um, you know, here at Ida Culver House, I facilitate a number of different support groups. And, you know, I don't know yet what it means to be, you know, in my 70s, 80s, or 90s, but the power of group work is that the other participants do. They're living you know, similar experiences and they can share those experiences, which can be validating and supportive. And you know, a lot of really great relationships, friendships um, and support come out of these groups. Uh, finding and seeking social support. So you know, it can be really easy in the role of a caregiver um, to maybe let too much time go between, you know, our visits with others in our life, family and friends, but really being intentional to, you know, schedule that time to, you know, see people, talk on the phone, go for a walk with a friend, um, and, and keep those social support aspects strong in your life. Setting personal health goals. Uh, it could be, you know, something small like, you know, working on your sleep uh, hygiene. And, and I encourage you to start small, maybe just, you know, try to increase it by 30 minutes uh, week by week and until you're at a place that it's, it's truly, you know, making a difference in how you feel. Um, getting, you know, staying active. We all know that frequent exercise delivers a lot of health benefits. Um, it also has this powerful ability to, you know, boost our energy, boost our mood. So trying to get, you know, at least 30 minutes most days of the week. And realistically, I know that that isn't possible for everyone. So don't, don't let that stress you out and feel, you know, like a, a barrier, even if you can get 10 minutes here and there, you know, some physical movement is better than none. And relax, rest and enjoy yourself. So this, 
this is the area where it's going to look different for everyone. Um, it might be that listening to music, watching a movie, um, it's how you, you know, enjoy yourself and relax. Some people enjoy, you know, a nice bath or getting a massage, uh, maybe journaling, uh, maybe, you know, humor can be a great way to kind of boost our mood and combat stress. And then, of course, you know, it's been proven that things uh, such as meditation and yoga, uh, visualization, these are all really beneficial ways to combat stress and take care of ourselves. And the wonderful thing about these things is that there are online resources. You don't have to necessarily even get to an in-person meditation class. Uh, there's a number of different ways that you can experience these um, relaxation benefits. Last but not least, making sure to see your doctor. So, you know, getting your regular checkups for yourself. Um, most care caregivers, we do a great job of making sure that our loved one gets to all of their different provider appointments. Um, so prioritizing that for oneself as well. Um, and I encourage you to let your doctor know that you're a caregiver. Um, just having that awareness um, of your role uh, can cue them into maybe some things that you're experiencing. Tell them about any symptoms or concerns that you have. And by doing these things, it can, it can help make sure that you stay healthy and make you a better caregiver. Now, for many caregivers, it can be really hard um, to imagine leaving your loved one in someone else's care. But it's by taking a break, it can be one of the best things that you do for yourself as well as the person that you care for. Um, you know, respite care provides caregivers with a temporary rest from you know, the responsibilities of caregiving. Um, with the peace of mind that your loved one is still continuing to receive the same quality of care in a safe environment. Here at Ida Culver House, Ravenna, respite care can be for, provided to give caregivers that much needed break, or in the case that maybe a, a caregiver needs to travel or, or has something that will take them away from their caregiving responsibilities for a period of time. We provide a level of care that's needed for some that, that maybe they're not currently able to get in their, set, in their setting at home or wherever they're living. And we have a safe environment uh, for someone who's maybe recently had a hospital stay or a health issue or event that they're you know, needing to recover from and get stronger. So, while I was talking about all the different ways that we can take care of ourselves, the tips for caregiver self-care, you know, some of those can fit into our daily routine um, with some effort and intention, but it is really important and sometimes crucial for caregivers to get a real break from that constant responsibility of caregiving. So, you know, having a month, a week, whatever it might be, to just kind of reset, to prioritize themselves, um, take care of their own personal appointments, um, do the things that, you know, they feel passionate about, that give them purpose and me meaning. Again, with that comfort and peace of mind that their loved one is, you know, spending time with someone else who has their best interests in mind. So just a little bit about the logistics of our respite care here at Ida Culver House Ravenna. This is gonna be unique to every individual. No two people's situation are exactly alike. So through the conversations with our team here as you're exploring what your respite care might look like, you know, there might be little nuances that are different, but these are kind of the guaranteed thing. For anyone seeking respite care, we do require that it be at least 30 days. Um, for any of our residents moving into Ida Culver House, Ravenna, whether that's for a respite stay or to stay long-term, we do a complete health assessment. There's no community fee 
And then the individual has the option, depending on the length of stay and their preference, um, we have both furnished and non-furnished apartments uh, for individuals to stay in. I do want to highlight some of the other resources here at Ida Culver House Ravenna uh, for individuals coming for a respite or moving in for a longer stay. Uh, we have a memory fitness program that tailors uh, activities in small groups and one-on-one -on -one sessions for individuals that are experiencing some decline in their memory and cognition. Um, so these sessions um, have activities that are designed to stimulate, enhance, and kind of stabilize the cognition where it's at. Uh, and also we all know that Hopefully we all know that socialization is a, a huge benefit to us maintaining our cognitive function. So the, the socialization aspect of the memory fitness program is huge. Also, your loved one can have in-home assistance. And that can be either through our nursing staff here um, through assisted living or some families and individuals prefer to have a private caregiver come in and provide care for a portion or the full day. Also unique to era living communities, we have a program called Almost Like Family. And this program provides accompaniment and transportation to and from medical and personal appointments. And then we also have a companion um, and companion visit support aspect of that. So a little different than caregiving, but maybe someone just, you know, they can't read the paper like they used to, and they would love someone to come in, um, you know, a couple days a week and read to them or play a game with them, go for a walk with them. So that is also built into our almost like family program. And then we have a robust calendar of events here at Ida Culver House. We have a number of different exercise options, uh, many different lectures and learning opportunities, uh, support and discussion groups, outings, personal shopping, lots of opportunity for socialization. And then again, unique to era living, the counselor support that I provide. So again, just to, to highlight what are the benefits for your loved one being cared in respite care. Here at Ida Culver House Ravenna, we have nursing staff oversight seven days a week. There's staff in the building overseeing things 24 seven. We have some other layers of support um, such as pull cords in the apartments um, in case you know, someone fell or needed immediate assistance as well as personal pendants that people tend to wear either around their neck or on their wrist. This can be a great opportunity for someone to recover. If, as I mentioned earlier, if they've had a hospital stay or a change in medical condition and they, they need to kind of rehabilitate and get stronger. And you know, physical therapy, occupational therapy, home health services can also come into the community and provide care in a residence apartment. It's important to remember that respite care services benefit the person receiving care as well as the caregiver. So, you know, uh, individuals that come to us for respite care are able to interact with others who are having similar situations and experiences. They spend time in a safe and supportive environment and they have the opportunity to participate in activities that are designed to match their personal needs and abilities. I do wanna also mention that there are a number of other support groups and resources for caregivers um, locally. And we do have a handout that we can send out to all of you participants after this session. So here at Ida Culver House, I provide a monthly Zoom group that is designed to support our family members of residents here. So that would be something uh, if your loved one moved in here that you would have access to. The Greenwood Senior Center also has an extensive number of groups for a variety of different caregiving situations. And then there's other family caregiver support programs for unpaid caregivers. 
So I want to just emphasize that even though when in some moments it can feel like you're alone in the experience of caregiving, um, you're not. And it can be really hard to ask for help. And I, I truly acknowledge and recognize that. Um, hopefully, this has helped you realize that, you know, not asking for help can lead to just feeling more isolated, more frustrated, even depressed. So I encourage you rather than struggle on your own, you know, take advantage of the different resources at Ida Culver House and within King County um, to help you and to help your loved one that you're providing care for. At this time, that I, I hope that that was helpful information for all of you. And I'd be more than happy to field any questions to you know, hear any comments, to go over anything that I talked about uh, in this presentation. Well, thank you, Carrie. That was a very informative presentation. We really appreciate your, your wealth of knowledge that you shared. Uh, we did have one person who was curious about um, whether at Ida Culver House, if we can offer uh, any respite stays shorter than 30 days, such as for a couple of days a, a week or a week at a time, which I'll look into, uh, I will check with the executive director, but I'm wondering if you have any um, resources for um, any uh, outside of Ida Culver House, Ravenna, that may be able to help in a situation for a couple of days at a time or a week or something like that. I. I know for sure that at Ida Culver House Ravenna, we do require respite care be at least 30 days. Um, I, off the top of my head, I'm drawing a blank on the name, but I, I do believe there is a local resource that can do shorter uh, respite stays. And what I'll do is I will look that up and I will add that to that resource list prior to us sending that out to the participants. Okay, great. Thank you, Carrie. Yeah. Uh, and if you'd like, we could wait. That was the only question I've seen so far. If you'd like to wait a couple of minutes and see if any others come in, yeah. we can. Uh, or, of course, we can uh, always take questions afterwards. If folks would like to email them to me, I can forward them to Carrie to answer, too. I'm, I'm fine with waiting. Sure. <laughs> Now, Carrie, are there um, any sort of like adult daycare services that you know of that may be able to help if someone wanted just while they're at work, someone who might be able to keep an eye on their loved one? That is a is a great question. I There might be some of that in the resource list. Um, and I know that the Greenwood Senior Center and probably some other community senior centers have some different options for maybe partial day programming, but I can, I can look into that a little bit thoroughly to make sure that's clear in the resource list that we distribute. Okay, great. Thank you, Carrie. So it sounds like we may have a little bit more information uh, coming uh, in the next coming days here that we can provide to folks who are looking for something a little more short term than a 30 day respite stay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, it doesn't look like we've had any other questions come in. So thank you again, Carrie, for your time and your expertise. We really appreciate uh, everything that you've provided to folks here who are you know, helping to care for their loved ones and also making sure that they can care for themselves as well uh, to give them the strength they need to continue providing excellent care to their loved ones. Uh, and thank you everyone for joining us today. We really appreciated you uh, being with us. Uh, and just so you know, we will be emailing out an evaluation form. Uh, so we'd love to hear what you thought about this presentation and any feedback that you may have for us for future presentations. Uh, we're always looking to improve our Zoom webinar. So if you th can think of anything that we can do to improve, we'd love to hear it. Uh, we'll also email out that list of resources that Carrie made reference to, as well as her slideshow as well. So if you had any questions on any of the information contained in the slides, we'll email a PDF of that so that you can review those at your convenience too. And if you have any questions about Ida Culver House Ravenna, or if you would like to schedule a visit, please call us at 206-523-7315. Again, I'm Elliot Hack, the Community Relations Associate here at Ida Culver House Ravenna. And this concludes today's presentation. I ask you to have a wonderful rest of your week and we look forward to seeing you on future events soon until we can meet again in person. Take care and goodbye. Thank you everyone, goodbye.